Well, hello and welcome back to the All Saints podcast. Those of you who are watching on video can see that I have with me today my friend, your friend and fellow church member here at All Saints, Mr. Carl Hessler. Kyle, very good to have you with us. Thank Thanks you. Us. I, I feel like I've made it. <laughs> yeah, you've made it. I'm not sure what you've made it to. Wow. Uh, this, this warrants a word of explanation. Um, I, we should explain what you're doing mm -hmm. here. So um, uh, we've spent a bit of time this afternoon. It is Thursday afternoon. Um, we spent a bit of time recording some promo material for a conference that Kyle is organizing. Uh, you know, if you know Kyle at all, you know he's a, a businessman and a, uh, I don't know how you describe what you do, but you do marketing and a little bit of everything. A little yeah. bit of everything. But Kyle is organizing a conference at which he's invited me to speak. And I'm really excited both about the opportunity to share some thoughts at the conference, but also about the other people who are going to be there, the other speakers and the goals of the conference. And so, I suggested, hey, why don't we do a podcast as well as all the pro video that has been shot today? That that was nice of you. I begged to get on here. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, of course you did. Well, look, I mean, this is a happy meeting yeah. of minds. This is one of those situations where we're all trying to pull in the same direction. So um, uh, the conference is called, tell us. The Workspace Conference. Works-based. Yeah. Just play with that thought in your mind for a second and, and revel in the two or three or four different. Yeah. And know that your pastor here was the last line of approval. And if he had said, that's funny, but no, um, we wouldn't have done it. But he thought it, that was the, f when I told you it, it was the hardest I've ever seen you laugh. Yeah, it was great. It was, yeah. well, and, and let's just flesh out the things yeah. that occurred to me. So um, works-based, obviously in a reformed context, um, raises in the first instance, theological alarm bells, because it sounds like works-based as opposed to faith-based. Mm -hmm. But then it reminds us that faith without works is dead. Um, the kind of faith that works is the kind of faith that saves. Um, it's obedient faith. Yeah. Um, and so none of us in the Reformed tradition is or should be opposed to faithfulness as an outworking of our faith and commitment mm -hmm. to Christ. So that's one level. But it's actually a conference about work, right? Yeah. Yeah. And what we're wanting to say is, <laughs> I, can't, no, I can't say this, <laughs> work is based, right? I, it's good branding. <laughs> I hate that phraseology, but the based thing. Yeah, the base thing. I don't like it. Where does that come okay. from? Do you know where it comes it's from? It's a meme. It's a, I, I, you know, I saw some. I've never heard of. You it. know, here's somebody trying to redeem it. I saw somebody say today on Facebook, "base" should mean based on the Word of God. I was like, okay, yes and amen. Yeah. But I don't think that's normally what it means. I think yeah. It means like you're taking a red pill. Okay, so, so so what is what what you're trying to say with the title is, if you want to be genuinely edgy yes in the biblical sense uh get to work yeah improve on your vac vocation right yeah which is right. is a full orbed thing that we'll we'll get into kind of yeah, what yeah, we're yeah, yeah, yeah. talking yeah. about and so i laughed when kyle and jenny were talking to me about <laughs> this and um the, the other thing I, I guess i realized when i was listening to kyle talk about it is works based if you say it fast yeah. enough sounds like workspace as in the space where you yeah, work right, yeah. and the conference is actually going to be not just a conference it's a place where people who are recruiting or wanting to yeah. share ideas about new avenues for employment are going to be yeah. and hopefully the people who come to the conference will find opportunities to explore new spaces for their own work whether new jobs or yeah. At the very least, new ways of approaching their existing callings, but maybe new strings to their bow, new things they could do, right? Yeah, we. I, I a big thing for me was going off of some other conferences I've been to mm -hmm. in formal capacities, uh, i.e., when I was working with or working for my marketing company, uh, and we would get like a booth or there's opportunities to do business together. But then there's also informal, just meeting people and mm -hmm. networking. Um, I mean, really, a lot of the speakers we have coming to this conference are from networking opportunities I've gone to at like Grace Agenda right. in Moscow. Um, but really a big push of what I want this conference to be is in addition to the theological, which thank goodness you're, ha you're doing the heavy lifting for that. Happy uh, to oblige. <laughs> but in addition to that, I really want to have some explicit time set aside uh, on the, sa the Saturday morning for men to seek new employment for uh, vendors, sponsors, uh, business owners to seek out employees. Mm -hmm. um, also, we want people to do business together. So mm -hmm. um, I was fortunate at the last conference I went to with my marketing company, we secured quite a bit of contracts just from working hard, being there, having yeah. a presence, explaining what we do. Um, and I want that for our uh, the people that are sponsoring this 
event. I want people to come and say, you know, I'm looking for a guy who can do shirts. Oh, Main Street, Main Street Advertising. Mm -hmm. You know, I could even use my uh, office to get painted. Here's Stellar Painting. Mm -hmm. um, we'll, we'll contract Josh Strange to paint. Um, I would love for that. I want you and me to have a dis – um, we despise the idea of the parallel economy. Mm -hmm. But this is a step towards a, an eschatological – Economy. Economy. Yeah. That's maybe yeah. the best way to say that. Yeah, yeah, I think that's right. And so it's, I, I, I was, as you were talking then, I was thinking of it almost like a kind of 21st century Areopagus uh -huh. where, yeah, we're going to be talking about uh, not the latest ideas, old ideas. Yes. But at the same time, the Areopagus was a place where people met and discussed their business of the day. So it's, uh -huh. it's, and, or the very least is adjacent to the marketplace. And so um maybe we should jump in and, and I'll, I'll say briefly what i'm gonna be talking about and yeah. i know you know we've uh, talked about this already but and then i want to ask you to share with us the other speakers about whom i'm really excited and, yeah. and i yeah. think it'll be helpful for folks at all saints just before we do that you, you said at one point uh for men to come uh, obviously we're anticipating that uh the majority probably of people who will be looking for new employment will be men yep. um at the same time, this is a, this will be a great place for husbands and wives to come, or yeah, for women yeah. who are looking for vocational ideas to come as well, right? It's not just a guys' conference. Yeah, I won't. Um, we'll we'll say uh, I'll just tease one of our speakers, but one of our speakers wrote a really formative book to me right. um, about the household, and um, he has a lot of things to say about work integration. Mm -hmm. um, there's going to be a lot of discussions about how families are supposed to navigate. Um, ideally dads and the husbands working, but the head of household having to labor and it shouldn't be this truncated view of work, but we definitely want to, um, be encouraging families to come because I think we will have something to say to the wives who, um, maybe do have a second job to provide for, right, right. But, but we may also have something to say to the wife who's, um, edging towards empty nesting mm -hmm. uh or the wife that actually has a good handle on her home right now and that's frankly a that's a lot of women at our church and maybe actually could do a proverbs 31 thing and go Very consider correct. a field and buy it yeah so this is a is a whole other conversation that i'm yeah i've been talking about with my wife nicole in connection with the ladies fellowship over mm -hmm. a number of months to think about uh the, the most biblical and helpful way to talk about a, a woman's vocation without either undermining the centrality and the dignity and the wonder of uh, child rearing for those who yes. are married and able to have children, but at the same time, not shrinking um, the, the not hardly shrinking, but not restricting the landscape to that, especially for ladies who are either not married yet or not married and haven't married or, or aren't able to have children or whose children have flown the nest. Um, I don't want to restrict the landscape. There are lots of women who have, by God's grace, time in their lives at the moment and and would be well served by thinking yeah. about that. So that's another conversation maybe. But And also um, uh, yeah. just to oh, yeah, go yeah. back to my – on children too. Yeah. I mean I think a lot of people know um, we kind of – I don't know why we exactly started it, but it's been fruitful. Uh, Theoden, um, starting last year in January, started traveling with me. And my wife told me <laughs> – Jenny just told me a couple of days ago, like he came with you on 80% of your trips last year. Mm -hmm. There was only two you didn't come. And so, um, and he does well, we're in a very unique situation. This is not a principle for anybody, right, right. but it's our attempt to strive to, uh, not truncate work and family life. In one of the books that we're going to be referencing full-time, uh, Dave Bonson wrote it, talks about, uh, you don't have your work life and your home life. It's all together. And that's, that's a big emphasis of what we want to talk about. So, um, you know, when we do tickets and stuff like that, we're considering, uh, we want families to be there. We have to be mindful of capacity, but we want children there because there's going to be something hopefully to be said to them, um, whether in explicitly or implicitly mm -hmm. where dad's learning something and then mom's also encouraged, but the children should also be encouraged knowing that their mom and dad are trying to become better uh, dominion makers or right, dominion right. takers. Yes. Yeah. And we shouldn't underestimate the value of that. If, if a young lad, uh, a young lady, 15, 16, 17 years mm -hmm. old, to take a step into a, a really adult context, yeah. like, oh, wow, these people are serious. And, hey, they're taking me seriously yeah. as a future worker. Um, that can be the kind of experience that's really formative. I remember as a, as a young person going to um, career fairs and one or two other events that were opening the door to college study and being really excited by that. And I can still remember some of like the trips I took to uh, university science departments, in my case, because yeah. that's where I was headed. <laughs> But it was it was great, and and to see the kind of vision for what my future might, <laughs> like, 
little did I know, but what yeah. I thought it might hold Rocket up. Rocket science, this yeah, Astrid. And past it, yeah. But, but I mean, again, don't underestimate that for your kids. Yeah. Let, let me skip then. I'll talk quickly about what you've asked me to do and talk about. Um, and then we'll get on to the other speakers. Uh, I think it's probably fair to say that much of what I'm going to talk about will be familiar, at least in outline. But I'm planning to turn up the volume and turn up the speed a little bit and yeah. and try and say in the first talk um, everything I can think of to say with as much depth as I can go into in the time allowed about the dignity and value and importance and priority of work as a theological foundation for everything that that follows and i want to create the platform on which the guys who have more specialized practical experience of the workplace will be able to sort of bounce from without having to cover that ground themselves um and i was just really excited even in, in thinking through it this morning with you this afternoon pardon me that work is such a central theme to the bible's teaching it's no exaggeration to say that we work because it's how we become like god yeah right god has made us as his image bearers and for all the debates of theologians over the years about what it means to be in the image of god genesis 126 god tells us what it means to be in the image of god in that passage verses mm -hmm. 26 to 28 of genesis 1 and it means to take dominion to rule to get this beautiful garden and cultivate it to make it a beautiful city um to see those beautiful glistening rocks sparkling in the stream bed and to refine them and make from them pure gold to make a wedding ring for your wife or get the sand on the beach and wait for a few thousand years and then turn it into silicon chips and iphones and yeah you know the, that is taking the garden the raw natural beauty of the world and mixing it with human labor yeah. to make the world glorious and move in the eschatological trajectory that has been set for us um jesus is a worker jesus work was uniquely to overcome the curse on ours uh -huh. so adam's work was cursed by the sweat of your face you shall eat bread until you return to the ground and jesus experienced that curse in his death his sweat was like great drops of blood falling on the ground and in experiencing his death like that jesus has redeemed work for us and though work remains, so to speak, east of Eden, it's still under the curse of the fall. Nonetheless, it's redeemed in Christ. And we can expect not only at times to enjoy our work, nonetheless, despite the fact that it's you know, exhausting, we can expect it to be productive and fruitful. Yeah. And that by applying ourselves to it, even in the struggle, even in the hard graft of the seven to six rather than nine to five, <laughs> um, to find enrichment. And then if we integrate that with what scripture says about the, the vital importance of the Christian family, the life of the Christian home, and see the whole thing as our vocation. It's not just your seven to six job. Yes, it's yeah. your life as a man, woman, husband, father, child, church member, uh, citizen, all the things that we do in relationship along with our paid employment constitutes our calling in the world. In that rich, richest of senses, we are um, ourselves becoming like our heavenly father, like our creator by working. And we're making the world by Christ's grace, more like the kind of thing it ought to be. Yeah. Yeah. yeah yes. And amen. And that's, it's, um, that's your teaser, but that's it. You, you want it to get actually where um, it's a talk, but maybe he'll start preaching uh, during. <laughs> yeah. We'll and just uh, to preach Kyle. Please. And uh, <laughs> no, but it, it, I'm excited to hear that because, and this is why I wanted, you a part of this is we i wanted the most theologically rich man i know to share with us uh, a base ground for which hopefully the rest of the conference can mature mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. in so. yeah well um that i th let's think of that then as the kind of trampoline on which the rest of our speakers bounce and <laughs> and the rest of the speakers are actually famous yeah <laughs> and and legit um accomplished in a range of different domains. And I, do, you want to, do you want to tell us who the yeah. speakers are? Then we'll go through them one at a time and, and we'll talk about what you're going to ask yeah. each of them to do. So we got, um, um, thanks to one of your connections, we got David Bonson, mm -hmm. um, author of Full Time, uh, the, which just came out, and right. then also No Free Lunches, and I believe another book as well. Yeah, uh, of course, books. he's the son of uh, Greg. Greg Bonson, mm -hmm. the late great. Um, and But David Bonson 
while theologically really rich and smart, he's also managing $5 billion of assets for the Bonson Group. So right. he knows what he's doing. Yeah. Um, we also have David Reese, who's the owner of Armored Republic, um, which is a body armor manufacturer. He also has um, – I'm a, the name is escaping me right now, but he also has a small um, venture capital project going on where he's trying to accumulate uh, different types of industries. Um, but he's also a pastor too. Mm -hmm. um, he's a pastor. Uh, he's a Presbyterian in Arizona. Um, and then we have C.R. Wiley, PCA pastor, um, author, uh, and podcast guy. But he's also owns about eighty properties. <laughs> which, real quick, I'll tell you. I we were talking about rentals. <laughs> real estate. And he said, I've had two evictions the whole time I've in my 40 years of doing this. I said, Oh, great. I'm almost halfway there yes. <laughs> in my yeah. one year of in doing one it. Year of yeah. But no, he was, he was great. So, uh, but CR, uh, Chris is extremely handy. Um, but he's also a businessman. Mm -hmm. He's a different kind of business than, uh, Bonson or Reese, which is great. And that's right, fine. Right, right. And then the fourth guy, uh, uh, well, I guess fifth is, um, Andrew Krapashitz of Red Balloon, mm -hmm. formerly M and formerly of uh, CEO of MZ mm -hmm. in Moscow, Idaho. Um, and Andrew is an entrepreneur's entrepreneur. He right. just starts stuff. He starts stuff. And he's doing a great job of it. Currently, Red Balloon is trying to become a um, – it, it, well, it is. It's a uh, job posting website but with explicit conservative values. Mm -hmm. um, and I really like what they're doing. I believe in what they're doing. So they uh, – we we're going to get Andrew, and actually Red Balloon is our uh, present sponsor and partner mm -hmm. on it. So uh, grateful to have them on board. Great, great, great. So what's interesting about that is um, you've got uh, four guys, mm -hmm. highly productive, highly competent, proven in business. Yes. And four quite different businesses. So uh, capital management and investment, um, manufacturing, mm -hmm. David Reese. Uh, property management, along with a bunch of other things, C.R. Wiley has done a bewildering number of different yeah. things, along with being a pastor. He only told me about half of it. Yeah, yeah. And then, um, of course, um, uh, Andrew Krapuchets, who's worked in uh, really tech. kind of tech and and information. Yes. Broadly, the information space. An MZ was an analysis for yep. economic <laughs> modeling. And, but now moved out of that, sold the company, and is involved in a whole bunch of things from investing yeah. in small startups to Red Balloon and the kind of white glove recruitment. Thing. So yeah, and and we also have uh, Darren Doan right. who's going to be he's kind of assisting me on this. Darren's a friend. He's going to make a uh, movie, right? Yeah, <laughs> don't put it past them. But Darren's um Darren's going to help me with the like emceeing of it and right. uh, help with the panels. Uh, but let's give Darren his flowers. Darren, uh, producer of tons of music videos that like pretty famous. Mm -hmm. I think he did all the band Shine Down, late rock band. Anyway, uh, but he's also very involved in the marketing and branding agency. So right. um, he knows what he's talking in that area of expertise. Right, right, right. So now what's, what I really like about this conference is I think what Lord willing, if it goes well, what's going to happen is a version of a little bit like what happened when I interviewed Justin Durst and Tony Douglas for our <laughs> men's discipleship yeah. breakfast. Cause I thought I want to talk about work. And I want to get two guys who really understand their respective businesses. And those two men, you know, love them well. Yes. They're great guys here at All Saints. And it was one of the most well-received and exciting men's discipleship breakfasts that we've done here yeah. at All Saints. And it lasted a mere hour and a half. Now, what's going to be happening here is a bunch of guys who are no less accomplished than them, in many ways more well-known, certainly two or three of them, in different businesses, but with an explicit focus that goes beyond just talking to us about what they do is so valuable. Yeah. Um, it's beyond the most, practical. But it's, but it's actually the idea here is that we go beyond thinking about how we could do business differently yes. to actually doing business differently. So you, you have in mind um, numerous contexts at this two day event mm -hmm. for people actually to make connections and who knows, maybe to branch out on new ventures new careers to make connections with prospective clients yes or prospective contractors in other words you want this to be a forum not just for talking about how to do work christianly but actually to do work yeah, christianly and, get and it initiate yeah. Yeah. do you want to talk to us about the the details of of what people are going to be able to get from this event that they wouldn't just get from listening to the talks right? yeah so for, first off we want it to be highly 
communal and uh, very fellowship driven. Right. So um, we'll have a, um, there'll be kind of a special speaker event if anyone's interested. It's limited on Thursday night. Um, state, it'll be at a steakhouse. Um, but then Friday night, we're going to do uh, beer and zones. So that'll be nice. We'll do that at the venue. Um, so we're, and we're still seeing if we can do something Saturday night. We're not sure mm -hmm. exactly yet, but the idea is we want this to be um, local context driven right. um, so that one, it's just more fun that way. <laughs> but two, we, we love for people to be attracted to what we're doing here at All Saints. Cause I'm, I'm obviously influenced by a lot of, you know, Doug Wilson's my guy, <laughs> but, um, but you've been incredibly influential with me and all your sermons over the last few years that have impacted this. So we want the conference to have a real structure and understanding that's, yes, the talks are great, but let's, uh, you know, Paul, Paul talks about he, if, what is it when he's writing to the church in Corinth, he, I'm going to get it wrong, but he, don't, don't worry. Uh, okay. We'll edit it out. Fix it. Thanks Nate. <laughs> fix this up. Um, but he, but he's talking about how he'd rather be with them in person to not condemn them. So you could listen to all the talks online, right, right, right. but you're going to be missing out the yeah. connection, right. the opportunity to ask questions, um, the opportunity to network, you know, and work hand in hand with people. Right, right. And I would want to encourage people because I've done, I've been to enough conferences. I've kind of worked backstage at a few conferences. Now there's going to be opportunities fleetingly to talk to, some of the, you know, C.R. Wiley or David Bonson, who are, like you said, a little bit more famous, hmm. but don't miss the opportunity to talk to them for a minute, to talk to somebody else who might be just a face in the crowd to you, but might have some opportunities for you right, right. networking or business wise, or even friendship wise. Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, and we really want that to be a strong uh, dynamic. We want this to be more than just talks. This is a part business conference. It's part networking. It's part church conference, I guess you could right, call it. Right, right, right. But it's also, um, we want it to just be really relational. Right, right. Yeah. So if you want to draw those threads together, mm -hmm. it's it's a combination of um, theological instruction around yes. the foundations of work and why we do it and our aspirations, what they should be. With that then applied in a range of different ways. Yeah. Um, and then a context to actually begin to explore that. You're going to have vendors and other yes. people there who are going there because they think they might find new employees or because they think they might find new people to work with yeah. or because they think they might find new connections that will help them in their work and it will help them in their work only to the extent that it will help the people with whom they connect. So um, somebody who came to this conference, we will be praying for them and they could realistically be praying for themselves that, that this would not just inform them and give them a new vision for their yeah. working future, but actually this could be the careers fair that you never went to. Yes. And the, finally you do think, oh, wow, this is, I could do something new and different. And here's a guy who in God's peculiar providence, I met on Saturday, the 29th, 28th and 29th, 20, Friday, 28th, Saturday, 29th of June. Um, at works based in Fort Worth. I met, met them there and it was a, a turning point in my yeah. vocation. Yeah. I, yeah, yes, that would be amazing at, um, when I was at the fight, laugh, peace conference this last year, um, I helped, uh, film a proposal and yes, it'd be great if somebody got engaged, I guess, at our conference, I don't think that'll happen, but what I want is the version of that where, um, the, the dad who's at a really tough job, um, like genuinely tough. He's, he's laboring hard and whether it's DEI training getting thrown at him or whatever, he is able to find some new employment and it changes not just his life, not mm -hmm. just his wife's life, but blesses his children's children's Proverbs yeah, yeah, talks yeah, about. Yeah, great, great. Um, but let me caveat that real quick because we've, this is a big point of emphasis. We also do not want people to come to this conference and walk away thinking, I need to quit, quit my woke job. Mm -hmm. We don't want that. Yeah. We want you to be encouraged at your duty station. Right. Your duty station may need to change. We're not saying that it doesn't, but we are we we don't we want to push back from this moral impurity. That might be the way to say it. Of saying I need to go work for, um, you know, Red Balloon. You know, right. when I work for LinkedIn, I, I I need to go work for Red Balloon. Well, maybe maybe that's <laughs> not necessarily bad. Right. But you don't need to feel a moral obligation to do it. Right. The moral obligation is to provide for your family and be yes. the best employee at LinkedIn, you can be. Right, right, right. Yeah. So I, I think just to draw those threads together and then we'll talk about this, the details uh -huh. and how people can get tickets and so on. Um, 
the goal here will be both to inform and to provide a context to actually initiate change. Yeah. Um, and the change might be a changed perspective on your current vocation. Mm -hmm. And there'd be many people who would value that. The goal might be a change to your current vocation. We don't want to beg those questions and presuppose anything. Yes. But whether you're looking for change or whether you're looking for encouragement, whether you don't know what you want to do or whether you're sure you're in the right job and you just want some encouragement in it, this would be a great opportunity for you to meet some new people. And who knows what, what the Lord may yeah. throw our way as a result of that. And I, and I do want people to be, I mean, I do think, I don't want to say optimally, but it would be incredible just for all saints purposes, hmm. because we do expect, we, we would love for all the churches in the area to send people, whether in Texas yeah. or outside. But a big part of, I think what you was drawn to, you were drawn to being part of this was hmm. we, I'm really focused on all saints. I'm focused yeah, on yeah. here and um, helping impact our people. I would, I would love to see a bunch of guys from all saints start a bunch of businesses. Yeah, yeah. Now, again, we're not imposing. We're not saying this is a principle. We're saying uh, if you listen to David Reese's talk that he's going to give on risk mm -hmm. and you're like, you know what? I've got a good trade. I've got some capital. I can maybe talk to a few guys that I know at All Saints or outside of All Saints that um, mm -hmm. could help me raise some funds. I, th I think I could do this. Yeah. Take the risk. Yeah. Yeah. We, we would love that to happen, but we don't want to impose that because we're not saying that that's mm -hmm. the right or wrong thing to do. Right. But we want you to feel the encouragement that if God's pushing in that direction, you could take yeah. that risk. And I've got to tell you, if if I were in in the business of thinking about that, I would want to talk to somebody who'd done the miles in the saddle, yes. like a David Reese, who uh, has n not just some theorist uh, and not even just my pastor. Um, I, <laughs> yeah. I'd want to talk to my pastor, I think, yeah. but I would also want to hear from Christian men with experience of doing that. And not just our speakers, um, your speakers, not just <laughs> the speakers, but the, um, the, the other vendors and even the other individuals who are there. Who yeah. knows what? Um, give us the dates and um, uh, uh, just, just so you know, yeah, just other details. So uh, it'll be June 28th and 29th, mm -hmm. and it'll be at the Hilton in downtown Fort Worth. Okay. Um, there'll be rooms available if, should you decide you want to just kind of crash Stay the night. Bit, yeah. and, and I say that because I think it's going to be a really fun day. Yeah, yeah. Be, lots it, of socializing. Well. Yeah, lots of socializing. So I, I, I could see a lot of people – even hang out. yeah hanging out so mm -hmm. feel free to do that um the tickets will be available i believe at workspace.com as of recording uh we just finished getting all the content together yeah. after five days of traveling yeah. so i think it'll be available at workspace.com yeah. maybe we could put that in the yeah we, we'll, we'll put the details in the show notes yeah. and um I, I have no doubt that the details might appear on the uh men's group chat yes uh, or times. and if um if uh one of the enterprising husbands uh, share them with their enterprising wife then i'm sure that would find its way to the ladies group chat as well yeah. uh prices to be confirmed soon but what the aim we were talking about pricing yeah. earlier the aim is to make it affordable for individuals families and yeah we're we're trying to just i want people at all saints to hear us say this and and larger context in our area that may want to come to this uh know that that is you know we're talking business so i do need to make profit on this it's, your job, it's, right? it's my job. Um, I'm not going to be reasonable if I'm not doing that. But I can tell you right now, the the deep and Pastor Jeffrey could confirm after our lunch, uh, the deeper desire is to get people here and be able to pay for mm -hmm. what needs to be paid for. That being said, please, you know, please consider like yeah. the pricing is not here to gouge by any means. Right, right. We're we're trying to we're really praying and thinking about what that should be like. Um, so there's yeah. that. And actually, I mean, one of the reasons I'm actually quite. Uh, excited just about our conversation here is i think what you're doing kyle is an example of a kind of entrepreneurial approach to business yeah. and like why not if you're if the lord has gifted you with skills and opportunities in marketing and and communications and so on why not put those to work and try and start something which doesn't only help provide for your family it yeah. helps other people to do the same for theirs i love it and um i i speak at lots of events um as well as obviously at all saints and i'm really looking forward to this one so thank you sir for the invitation to I, be a part of it i just want to say that um your enthusiasm i first approach you of course as my pastor mm -hmm. do you think this is a good idea for me and my family to do? <laughs> and then subtly snuck in there and i'd love for you to speak there so your encouragement and your enthusiasm has been infectious contagious mm -hmm. it's been very helpful um and i just want to say to all saints people this we are so blessed um, to be shepherded my our, our pastors and even Pastor Neil. Um, we we love you guys. Or we love you guys so much, and you guys have been so fantastic. Um, and I don't know if this is a first on the All Saints podcast to say 
uh, give you some, <laughs> give you your flowers, but um, we, we really appreciate you. Well, that is probably a first on the podcast, but we feel the love. I can tell you on behalf of the other Jeffs that um, yes. we, we, we love serving here and it's a, uh, um, yeah, we hope that this event is just one more thing. It's not an All Saints event, but it's an event that I'm Great. excited to commend to you also. Thank you. Thank you, Kyle. And um, that'll do us, I think. Um, the Lord bless you guys. Um, thanks for sticking around to the end. Um, any questions? Then obviously this time you probably want to talk to Kyle. Um, he'll be at church on Sunday, every Sunday. Uh, if you've got any questions about what I'm going to talk about, come talk to me. But I commend this event to you and you'll be hearing more details soon, Lord willing. Thank you. God bless. Bye for now. <laughs>